Hello, it is Saturday, November 25th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday crossword today, which means a themeless, tricky puzzle. And hopefully I uh, I do a bit less self-sabotaging than I did yesterday, <laughs> because this might be a trickier puzzle. And so I don't need any additional artificial obstacles put up. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. This hopefully not self-sabotaged edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, Overfull Hitbox, Jake Rodkin, and as always, the indomitable Showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them. They are benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and they support this channel and keep the whole thing going. I'm very appreciative uh, of their efforts. So thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel in that way, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve, or click the link in the description field where you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons, as well as the Let's Check the Crosses official mug for benefactors. This reminds me saying this, that I need to do this week's mini puzzle pseudo speed solve um, for patrons. So look forward to that imminently. Uh, there's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which you can join via description field link. It's a nice friendly chat community over there. And uh, f- finally, please do subscribe to the channel on YouTube, like, and subs- uh, like the videos and comment on them if you've got anything to say. Those things are all very helpful as well. All right. Thanks to anyone who's done any of those things. And now let's get on to today's crossword. This is a um, Saturday themeless puzzle, of course, by Jeff Stillman, who's constructed, I think, around 10 puzzles, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's do see what's in store for us on this tricky themeless. All right, interesting, um, interesting grid. Yeah, this sort of little, I don't know, little kind of galaxy of black cells in the middle. Anyway, um, annual NAACP ceremony since 1967. Uh, I think that's the NAACP uh, image awards. Um, pretty confident about that, but let's check the crosses just in case, because you can, you never know. 1972 hit whose singer claims to know a place. I know. Uh, I'll probably, I don't know. I feel like I should recognize this based on that lyric, but I I can't think offhand. Surname on Cheers. Right. Okay, I do I do think I know this. Sam Malone, character from the uh, hit sitcom Cheers. Pretty sure that'll be right. Kind of group in chemistry. Uh, alkaline. Uh, what would this be? Amino? Amino acids? That could be it. I'm not actually certain about that, but um, I'm just going to put it in for now because I'm going through these crosses here. Blank Guesser browser game that pulls from Google Street View. Um, I don't know this. I've not encountered this, but with three letters starting with a G, my guess would be GeoGuessr because it sounds like, you know, something geographical in nature. GeoGuessr. Maybe, maybe you have to sort of guess where a location is from its Google Street View. It could be it. Suffix similar to tricks, right? Okay, so this is uh, in in certain words used to indicate to sort of as a feminine ending for a word, which well, I was going to say, I think I know what it was, but actually, I think there are two possibilities at least. Could be s or et. Those are both, I think, possible answers. So I'll just have to leave it for now. Height could be the well. It depends what you mean by height. If you mean height as a dimension, I'm not sure. But if you mean sort of the height of sophistication, the highest point of it, it could be the acme, the highest point. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm less certain about this than I am some of the other things I've put in because it, it could just be not thinking of the proper sense. Extra wide shoe spec. Right. Okay. Um, I do know that E is involved in shoe width. I've never actually bought shoes using the width measurement, only ever the kind of standard size measurement. So I've never really learned this. I know that E is involved. Is it, is it four E's? Is e, does the sort of number of E's represent the relative width? Not sure. Bows. Um, I mean, this will be a, you know, a romantic partner or something. What would start with W and be this? Not sure about that one. Let's keep going. Don Draper and Roger Sterling on a hit AMC series. This is the great 
great, great series, Mad Men, and they are ad men, uh, which is obviously, you know, where the, the term Mad Men, from, from which the term Mad Men derives. Okay, so this looks like it is e e e e. Okay, what a funny, what a funny answer, if indeed it is correct, which I suspect it is. Uh, what about this one? Hit hard. To ram something would be to hit it hard. Some forensic lab samples are DNAs? You wouldn't really say that, would you? I don't think so. Some forensic lab samples. Not sure. Oops. Get ready in a hurry. Slap on some makeup, sort of. I'm trying to think of something that's like throw on some clothes or something like that. That starts with an S. I'm not, I'm not sure. Series of steps in Spain. Series of steps in Spain. I wonder if this is referring to a dance. Oh, wait. It ends, yeah, it ends, yeah, sorry. I didn't even look closely enough to see that it does end in in something that could be dance. Oh, wow, this could be DNAs. That would be very strange. I've never heard that said that way. Well, let's see. Flamenco dance. There we go. There we go. That took me longer than I needed to, given that I I fairly quickly... The reason I, th I thought it was steps is because I thought maybe... When I read this, I my, the very first thing that popped into my mind was the Spanish steps, but that's not actually in Spain. So... I was, then it made me think, well, maybe we're intended to think that at first, and it's it's a bit of misdirection. What else could steps be? They could be dance steps. So that, that was sort of how I arrived at that. And then for some reason, after, after getting that fairly quickly, it took me a while to then fill in the fairly obvious um, solution based on that. Okay. Oh, right. Suffix similar to tricks. It was a third one that I didn't even consider. But of course, N is also, as in comedienne, uh, is also a possible feminine ending. Right. Okay. Um, well, there we have it. Noted anti-gun demonstration on the National Mall of oh, the Million Man, Million Mom March. Right, Million Mad March was a, a totally different demonstration. Uh, but there we go. The Million Mom March. Okay. So, bo oh, bows are wooers. Okay, they're people who might woo you. Who might, you know, court you. Illinois City near St. Louis. Uh... Not sure. Substitute to fill in for someone would be to substitute. Common residential street name. Maple? I don't know. I mean, sometimes trees are named or used as street names like Elm Street, famously. Um, I don't know. Uh, Elton, Illinois? I don't know. I'm just trying to think of what this were. Oh, Alton, maybe if this is maple. So if this were, if this were to be maple, this would be a P. Ex yeah. Okay. Maybe it is. Ex if you expect something to happen, you plan on it. There we go. So this would be an L thumbs up response. Yes. A like on social media. Okay. I think this is maple. It's around two o'clock in quotation marks. So I think that maybe then means it's not, it doesn't mean two o'clock as a time. So maybe it's two o'clock as a compass direction, which would be uh, east by northeast. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that is around where that would be. Um, so yeah, if you just imagine that, you know, the, the hands of a clock aligned onto a, um, a compass rose. Okay, so this, this is probably Alton. I mean, that sounds like the name of a city, but let's see. I'll take, no, oh, still, still not getting this 1972 hit. I'll take, oh, I'll take you there. Is that it? That must be it. There we go. Suddenly popped into my mind. Let's just like check the crosses. Well, gosh, could be. You never know. No, it's not that. Um, not sure. Big name in green products. Eco something maybe. Not sure. Actor Rutger Hauer of Blade Runner. There we go. Um. Fully anesthetized. If you're fully anesthetized, you're out. You're under general anesthetic. You're completely under. You're out. You're unconscious. Give a whoop would be to whoop, maybe? No, no, no. Sorry. That's literally in the clue. What am I doing? Uh, that was an absurd guess. To give a whoop would be to 
Shout. Yeah. Maybe that's it. What about this? Big name and green products. Still don't have any ideas about that. If you saw something informally, you caught it. You caught a movie, for instance. Um, don't know the green products still, I don't think. Expressions of repugnance. Ugh. All right, so this is looking pretty good, actually. What was it that I was trying to confirm here? Oh, I guess it was I'll take you there, but I was pretty confident about that. But these other things seem to be working as well, so that's that's fine. X-ray blank novelty purchase. X-ray specs, which I guess in this case we're spelling with an X rather than a CS in that sort of, you know, commercial kind of marketing sort of way. Remark following an interesting development. The plot thickens. There we go. There we go. The plot thickens, you might say, after something surprising has occurred. Line on a Montana license plate. Tree something? Tree, a tree line? A tree... So it could be a line... Once again, I think this is going to be misdirection, but I'm not sure which direction it's going. Uh, so... It's either a line meaning a state motto, which it absolutely could be a line, you know, verbally, you know, sort of textually, or it could be something actually drawn, you know, something illustrated on the Montana license plate, which just based on the beginning of this, I'm wondering if it's some kind of tree, an element of a tree or, you know, something drawn via multiple trees. I don't know. Documents for foreign nationals. Exit visas. Those aren't really used in almost any countries anymore. Uh, documents for foreign nationals. I'm not sure. Old French love poem. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I know this. Right. Okay. This area is a little tricky over here. Follower of Marx. Marxism. I think so. Often when you see. Not always, but often when you see follower, it's, it's sometimes a slightly punny way to refer to or proceed or something like that, uh, to refer to a suffix or in the other case, a prefix of the word in question. So in this case, it's just letters that would, that would come after Marx, Marxism, or actually it could be Marxist, I guess. Um, I think Marxism is more likely just because that's a concept. It's a thing, but, uh, I guess I don't actually know. Prefix with linear. Okay, well, here's another one of those, but they're just telling us it's a prefix. There's no, um, you know, you could, they could have phrased this more similar to the, in a similar way to the Marx one, could have said something like uh, linear procedure or, or linear introduction or something, you know, and it would feel like it's maybe actually describing an introduction that is linear, but no, it's, it's just referring to the prefix. Anyway, it doesn't matter because they've just said prefix. Uh, rectilinear, that's a, that's a geometric phrase. Is there another, I mean, I'm sure there are, there are other prefixes for linear. I'm just trying to think of ones with C, but let's just try that. See if it gives us anything to relish. Something is to enjoy it. So that, that feels good. Legal checks are stays. So it could be a check, not in the sense of an evaluation, but a check in the sense of something is restraining you or holding you. If you put a stay you know, court could order a stay. It could stop something from happening. And that could be a legal check. I think that it seems plausible to me. I'm going to put it in. Peanuts girl with curly hair. Ooh, I'm not sure actually offhand. There's a comic strip character, but yeah, I'm not sure. What about this one? You blank, you what maybe? And rougher than usual instance as a, as of a head cold or thunderstorm raging raging cold? No, I, why would be strange here? I mean, stays could be wrong. This could all be, I could have, I could be piling incorrect guess upon incorrect guess, which does sometimes happen. Network descended from the first national superstation. Oh, I remember when I was growing up, TBS, the Turner Broadcasting System was sometimes marketed as the superstation. And I had no idea what it meant. And I still have no idea what it means. I just assumed, I, I didn't assume it meant anything. I just thought it was a marketing line entirely. But this makes it feel like it's actually some sort of concept that actually has meaning that they were then using as a marketing term. That's interesting. Okay, I, I mean, I, yeah, maybe the, I bet this is the answer. I mean, I do remember them using that word and I don't remember ever seeing it in any other context in my entire life. So 
Who knows? So rougher than usual instance as of a head cold or a thunderstorm. This doesn't look very good to me. I think I must have something wrong. Maybe TBS is wrong. I don't know. Uh, get ready in a hurry. Something the something. To get ready in a hurry. Oh, scramble the jets. Yeah, that's a that's a phrase. So you say, ah, scramble the jets, you know, in the sense of you're making a, it's a military metaphor, obviously. You would be you know, launching your jet fighters, but you, know, you can deploy it in whatever context. Okay, well, there we go. So maybe, maybe I'm a little bit more confident about this area down here then. Let's look at this. Scale notes. Mies, as in do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, notes of, notes of the scale. And mi is one of them. It's usually, I usually see it spelled M-I-S, but it can be spelled M-E-S as well. Um, but it's probably this. I'm not certain that's the answer, but I'm going to try and check it. Big stink, more colloquially. To make a, I don't know if this means an odor, a smell, or if it means, you know, he, oh, he made a big stink about it. He made a big commotion, a big, big to do. Uh, I'm not sure which I think that is. Deploying ransomware for one. Hmm. I don't know, hacking or, or extorting. I mean, the deploying makes me think this is going to end with an ing, which is interesting because there's not much left here. And this doesn't look very good, so maybe it isn't. Cold War concerns for short. Oh, ICBMs, intercontinental uh, ballistic missiles. That's probably the case. So, oh, e-crime. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think it's the first time I've ever seen e-crime. That's a new e word for me. It's the first time I've seen it in the crossword or ever in my life, uh, which suggests how entirely unused this is. It's the return of the spurious E word. I disapprove heartily. The funny, the ironic thing about this one is that most of the E words like E mag and things like that, you know, they're words where people just don't even bother saying it. I mean, they might say, oh, it's an online magazine, but they probably just wouldn't. They'd probably just say it's a site or it's a news site or something. Um, but the, the ironic thing about this one is there is a goofy word for this and it's cybercrime. <laughs> there is actually an incredibly silly sounding word that fulfills the E word function, but it's not E. Nobody ever says E crime. They just don't. If they want to sound silly, they say cybercrime. Okay. Anyway, that's a wrap. Sorry, an article of clothing, right? And here's a great example of an exclamation point clue, which in, uh, in some cases, and in this case, means the clue is being said about the answer. It doesn't define it. So sorry doesn't mean that's a wrap. But sorry is a wrap. It's a wrapped article of clothing. And so that's a wrap is something you could say if you were pointing at one, you're, you know, gesturing in a store and saying, that's a wrap. It's a sorry. There we go. Okay. So some forensic lab samples are DNAs. Well, that's funny. I mean, I guess, I guess the A stands for acid. And so, you know, you could refer to acids. It's just, I've never heard anyone say DNAs, I don't think. But, um, yeah, but there we have it. All right, so a big stink more colloquially. Oh, a hissy fit. Okay, so it is making a stink as in making a big commotion. I don't know that I've heard that referred to as a hissy, but it doesn't surprise me that, that it might be. Something often containing a single parenthesis. Oh, a smiley, an emoticon. The things we used before emojis came, came around. Modern descriptor with man or woman. Uh, cis, so in other words, someone who's not transgender would be that prefix. All right. Says who? Question mark. What does this mean? Says who? I don't know. This is RNA maybe? No, it's not. Hospital staffers are RNs, registered nurses. Okay. What does this mean? I have no idea what this is. Says who? It's obviously a pun. I mean, the question mark is there, but I just don't see what... Oh, an, an owl? I don't know. I can't, I can't, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Anyway, uh, lampoon. To lampoon something is to, um, to spoof it, to, um, mock it or parody it. So 
Yeah, maybe Spoof. Peanuts Girl with Curly Hair. Frida? I don't know. I don't recognize the name. Subtly acknowledge in a way would be to wink at something. So actually that could be Frida. Maybe this is a D. Rougher than usual instance as of a head cold or a thunderstorm. Bad. Oh, a bad one? Wow, that's very specific. As of a head cold or a thunderstorm specifically? That was a bad one. What? Is that? <laughs> I'm completely baffled by the specificity of this clue. Those are such particular usages for this. Are, are head colds and thunderstorms disproportionately referred to as bad ones when they're rougher than usual to, relative to other things when those other things are rougher than usual? I just don't even understand why you need the examples. That was a bad one. All right. What a bad one? A bad head cold or a thunderstorm? <laughs> Must be one of those because people don't refer to anything else as bad ones. Okay. I mean, I know it says as. I know it's not saying exclusively. I'm just very confused as to why those are picked as the examples. I don't, yeah. Okay. Well, line on a Montana license plate. Okay. Right. So it is going to be a motto probably. Tree, the tree line state or something. Tree something state. Old French love poem. I don't know. Can't confirm that yet. Follower of, okay, right, we saw that. It could be historism. Well, gosh, could be, you suppose, something, something like that. Oh, yes, I suppose. Well, gosh, could be, yes, I suppose. Okay, that, that works. Autumn, de, <laughs> autumn procedure. So this is autumn written in French. And so before that would be summer, which is été. So there we go. A little bit of French. And um, as is generally the case with such clues, when you have, I don't know, a bit of the clue, maybe at least half, in this case, exactly half of the clue written in a given language. Generally, the answer will also be in that language. Okay, big name and green products. I don't know. It looks like SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States, but obviously it isn't because that has nothing to do with the clue. Oh, scotch, as in the maker of scotch tape. Oh, is that because I think green is their brand color? Is that what that's referring to? Or do they make ecologically kind of conscious products. I don't know. I'm not sure actually which this means. I mean, I just think it's probably the answer, but I couldn't tell you exactly why. Aerospace company that makes launch vehicles for NASA. I have no idea. Maybe it's not Scotch. I don't know. To us in Latin. Maybe, yeah, maybe it isn't. Hmm. What about this? Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Gods? Oh, this doesn't look very good. Scale notes. I don't think this is right. Well, uh, so planets, obviously. Could be orbs, I guess. The, the New York Times crossword does love referring to celestial bodies as orbs. So does that help with anything here? 27 down is Olive Lover. Oh, br uh, no, my first thought was Bruno, but it's not Bruno. It's Bluto is the uh, sort of antagonistic character in Popeye, who's a competition, well, I mean, fancies himself uh, Popeye's competition for the affection of olive oil. Uh, so there we go. I think that's right. And then this is referring to that 27 down, for example. So Bluto, for example, is a tune, a cartoon character. There we go. So says who? Oh, Simon says. <laughs> okay, there we go. I don't know why that took me so long. <laughs> So it's the game, Simon says. All right. Ending with hot or honey. Hot pot or honey pot. There we go. Japanese zither. Oh, right. I know this. It's a um, a koto. It's a, you know, Japanese string instrument. I'm not 100% sure of that. Didn't lose the thread. Kept it. Kept. Oh, you kept, you kept up. Not kept it. Kept up with the, you know, with the, the conversation. You didn't lose the your mental thread of events or, or argument or discussion. Okay, so Spanish is to son as, I'm probably mispronouncing that, sorry, as English is to are, I would think. You are. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's right. This is con conjugating the verb to be. Okay, so what about this? Aerospace, com aerospace company 
Astra? I have no idea. Is this, could this be Scotty then? I mean, I don't know this company. I'm just, I'm only guessing Astra purely because of the, the space connection, NASA, the space agency. So I don't know. Have we looked at this yet? No, we haven't. Oh, right. Blank prize, major honor in mathematical achievement. Right. Okay. Do I know this? I'm not sure if I do. Scale nodes. Oh, right. Oh, right. Another one of these. So we had, we had me's before, so we could have rays here. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, let you do again. So doesn't really help me, unfortunately. I can't think what this is. Oh, well, that's tricky. What am I going to do about this area? Oof. To us in Latin. Ugh. I just don't know Latin. That's the problem. Um, nobis? I mean, that's, that's something you see in Latin sometimes. Uh... Scots? That's, that's something. Scott, I've seen that as a brand. That could be Astra then. This could be Able Prize? The thing is, I have to put something in here, and I'm not going to get any other help from elsewhere in the grid, so there isn't really any point in waiting on it, because I'm not going to ever have any more information than I do now. This feels right to me, Nobis. I, you know, I wouldn't bet money on it, but... Uh, oops, but I'd bet the completely... Uh, risk-free submission of a crossword. Uh, Qatar left it in 2019. Oh, OPEC, the um, oil sort of oil association of the um, organization of petroleum exporting countries. Uh, sleeping spot is, I don't know. Oops, I keep doing that. French verb whose first letter contains a circumflex Etre, which is also, oh, right. So it's a bit of rhyming going in, going on in this puzzle because here we had a conjugation of the verb, verb to be in English and Spanish, and then here we have the verb to be in French, and then here we had scale notes or mes, and then here we had what we think so far, scale notes are rays. At least the clue is the same. Um, were there any other, I think there was maybe at least one more case of this sort of thing, but I can't remember what it was. Anyway, singer whose illness was the highest his illness. Wow, that's a weird read. Singer whose likeness was the highest selling doll of 1976, surpassing Barbie. Wow, interesting. It must be Cher. Certainly not a fact I knew, but interesting. Oh, is Montana the treasure state? Could be the tree shore state, but I doubt it. Probably the treasure state. Um, I didn't know that, but there we go. That's probably the answer based on the fill. So sleeping spot is a roost. Okay, right. Yes. So you could, you could, you know, roost or, you know, and usually re refer to people doing that, but you could. Documents for, usually for animals. Document for foreign nationals. Oh, oh, it was sort of exit visas, but exit permits, I guess. Oh, rectilinear, not recto, sorry. So let's just look at the crosses and make sure here. So old French love poem is lie. Okay, I didn't, I didn't actually know that. Um, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, don't know. So exit permits and then follower of marks. It was isms, which is what I thought. So does this going to work? It is. Okay, that was a tricky puzzle. I thought I had. <laughs> um, as I was as I was um, filling it, I was thinking, oh, this is one of these puzzles where I don't really have a part where I get stuck in a particular area. It's just I have to be thinking about everything the entire time. But that didn't end up being true. It ended up being both because I did also get stuck over here and just had to take some educated guesses with Astra and Nobis, but it, it ended up working out. Um, Scott's, I think I've seen that name, but I can't... Oh, do they make garden products maybe? I can't remember. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've seen that brand before. Um, but yeah, this all came together. So the Abel Prize, I, I don't think I'm familiar with this. I can look that up as well, I suppose. Uh, but there we go. So tricky puzzle throughout. I mean, it was one of these puzzles where even when I wasn't stuck, you know, each clue, not maybe not every single clue, but many of the clues required some, you know, a thought process. And I tried to talk through it because uh, it was just happening throughout this whole, this whole grid. Um, so yeah, it's certainly a Saturday puzzle in nature. This definitely felt like a Saturday puzzle to me. It was punny, but it wasn't, um, didn't have the the level of sort of playfulness that that you often get in a Friday puzzle, it was a bit, you know, a bit more straightforwardly challenging 
in in the way that it was sort of slightly misdirection and misdirecting and punny. And um, and there we go. That is what we that's what we get on a Saturday. I think I think this was this was very nice as a Saturday puzzle, despite my my e crime objections and my complete bafflement at bad one. I still find this completely bizarre. I mean, it's not nothing wrong with it. It's just I just find it completely confounding. And look at those; they were in a single column. So this this one column contained all of my uh, all of my cluing issues with this 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 particular puzzle. But anyway, it was it was a very, very enjoyable puzzle other than that and the bad one wasn't even unenjoyable it was just funny that was that that was the saturday crossword hope you enjoyed it i will be back tomorrow for the much larger and should be less challenging sunday grid hope you join me then but until that point please do have an excellent remainder of your saturday take care (laughs) 